In the previous parts of this lecture, lecture 11, we've talked about pressure composition phase diagrams where on the y-axis there's pressure and on the x-axis there's composition. Let's consider the temperature composition phase diagram and as we said for a two component system we have three degrees of freedom. So if we're going to have a degree of freedom of temperature and composition then the third degree of freedom we're going to hold constant is pressure. So these would be constant pressure things. All right, so essentially a temperature composition phase diagram is just like a pressure composition phase diagram, except that the bubble and dew points are switched. So let's take a look here. This is a typical temperature composition phase diagram. Temperature here is along the y-axis. Composition is along the x-axis. Now with a pressure composition diagram, up here we had was the li uh, sorry, liquid, down here was the vapor, and in here, this region, there was two phases existing simultaneously. For this temperature composition, it's reversed. Up here is the vapor, vapor is up here, down here is the liquid, and in here you have a two-phase system. Otherwise, everything else is the same. So this then would be the liquid, where you go from a liquid to a vapor. Here's where you go from a vapor to a liquid, and in here you have both. Now let's see, let's start here, say, at A1 and see what happens. So what we do is, we add this again is a constant pressure. We'll start here and increase the temperature. So what we're doing essentially is putting, for example, a beaker on a hot plate and heating up the beaker. So we're going up here and there's constant atmospheric pressure. So far we just have a liquid and so on. When we reach this point, what we have is a phase change. And now the, we have two phases. One is a liquid, which has this composition. This will be a composition, uh, say, X1, a liquid. But then we have also coexisting a gas phase with this composition there. All right, so what would happen if we took this gas phase and now cooled it off? So now we take this and condense it down. So now we have a liquid at this particular composition. Then you take that liquid and vaporize it again. And now you have the gas phase take the gas phase, cool it down to the liquid, and so on. And what you end up with, eventually, is something in the liquid that's enriched here in the component that has the lower boiling point. This is an example of fractional distillation. Essentially, you take a liquid, you boil it, collect the vapor, cool it down. Take that liquid, boil it, collect the vapor, cool it down, and so on. And that's the example of fractional distillation, which is most easily explained by these temperature composition phase diagrams. Fractional distillation, boil mixture, condense, boil, condense, and so on. And you could use that to separate liquid mixtures, which I'm sure you've done or will soon do in organic chemistry laboratory.